This is Forest Road 6010. Ooh, good one. Oh, oh, you all right? Oh, Jesus, that was deep. So we have snow melt, and this is at least a foot deep. Okay, well, the road is flooded, so I'm gonna attempt it. This could be fun. Who knows? Really? Damn it. <laughs> End of the line. Good morning. We are on the shakedown run, testing out all the gear for the Oregon BDR trip that we're taking in a couple weeks. And by we, I mean me and the 450L. And also Travis, I guess. Travis is here. So we're at Crescent Lake right now. Our plan is to run the old Oregon BDR route six so i don't know if you i don't know if everyone knows the backstory of the bdrs the original route was the oregon backcountry discovery route that was what inspired the organization to be formed and, and make a route in washington so there's an old a series of old routes in oregon that you can get from the website from the ooch <laughs> the ooch the oohva Oregon Off Highway Vehicle Association, and um, they go all over the state. So the new BDR is completely separate and different than that. The route that we're running is the same one we did two years ago, my very first, honestly, multi-night backcountry motorcycle camping trip on the Africa Twin with Travis. And we decided what a great way to test out our BDR loadouts for the Oregon BDR by going on the old Oregon BDR. Um, and this route is super fun. Like I said, we've done it before, but we're at Crescent Lake. Last time we did it backwards, this time we're doing it the correct way. We'll set out from here and it goes all the way from Crescent Lake to Reed Sport on the coast. It's about, what, 260 miles? Yeah. 260 miles, mostly backcountry, very little highway. It'll be a fun adventure. We camped last night up here at Crescent Lake, so we can get a fresh start this morning and then we'll camp tonight along the route and then finish and go home tomorrow. So. Uh, a three-day, two-nighter. So I didn't film anything last night because we just came to camp and, and I melted my boot, my new boot, because I suck, and a bunch of fire stuff popped out onto my jacket and my chair this morning. So trip's going great so far. Travis, what are your impressions of the trip so far? I'm just, I'm glad to be back on this route. It's like revisiting an old friend, really. It is. We had a lot of fun last time, so yeah, we're gonna have fun this time. Uh, so uh, we camped last night. So we are mid-pack up, as you can see. It would, got kind of condens condensation-y in the tent because well, I breathe a lot and it was cold. Um, Farts a lot too. It's true. That's how I keep everything warm. Before I get back into packing up, which I'm not that excited about, I have to give a huge shout out and a thank you to Moto Camp Nerd for sponsoring this video and this trip, really. So if you don't know, I'd be shocked, but Moto Camp Nerd is the one-stop shop for all motorcycle camping gear on the internet. It, it Everything on that site is curated by the owner, Ben, who is a friend. Um, he is a guy who is working a full-time job trying to make this dream happen on the side. He literally goes to work at his store for four hours every day and then gets in his car and drives to work and works swing shift every night and then he spends all weekend packing orders. He's really trying to make this dream happen, and there is really nothing like Moto Camp Nerd on the internet. No kidding, because every piece of gear there is specifically chosen for the unique needs of motorcycle campers. Um, it's nice to have someone out there purposefully putting that stuff together for us, so I would encourage you to head over, check out the website. They sell everything, almost every piece of gear I'm running right now, even the luggage, they sell on MotoCampNerd.com, and you can save 10% on the site off your first order with promo code DORK in the road. He doesn't just sell camping gear, so I'm rocking one more new piece of kit on this ride, thanks to him. This is the Garmin Zumo XT2 that just came out and Moto Camp Nerd sent me one of these to test out. And so far I'm impressed with the updated features. The biggest and most important thing for me, all apologies to my friends at Garmin because I do think they make great products, but the XT was clunky AF and it was very difficult to get tracks onto it. This one has way better app connectivity with the Tread app. You can just put stuff on your phone. It works great. It's also a lot faster it doesn't have that weird lag that the XT has. It's this faster processor, and the screen is bigger. So we'll be navigating the whole route with this, and I'm going to use this on the Oregon BDR, and I'm stoked to have it. It mounts up to the old mounts for the XT. He has this on his website, and it is, if you're trying to choose between the two, definitely get the XT2. It's worth the extra money, in my opinion. I've enjoyed it much more. So thanks again to MotoCamp Nerd for sponsoring this video and this trip, and I hope you pop over and check out the website. Trav got up super early, and he's way ahead of me on the packing up front. But he's slow, so maybe I can catch Camp is packed. Bikes ready to go. We are going to depart for adventure, or at least the most fun section of the road. <laughs> nope. The most so hmm. <laughs> the most fun section of the route is right at the beginning. It's about 12, 15 miles. 
and then it's more scenic but easier to ride from then on. So we're very excited to tackle what was at the time, I was here before, the hardest thing I'd ever ridden on an adventure bike. And I think on this bike with my increased experience, it's just going to be a blast and not the butt puckering nightmare that it was the first time. So we're excited to get out there and hit it again. You ready Trev? He's ready. He gave me the horns. Does that mean he's ready or he's horny? I don't even know. I said ready. Either way, I'm going to get away from him on my bike. This is Forest Road 6010, the road to Summit Lake in the beginning of Old Oregon BDR Route 6. It is not maintained. It's very sandy, as you can see. And uh, to be honest, I was a little scared last time, and this time I'm actually excited. So that's a change. Even though I'm still riding with Travis, it could be better this time. I don't know. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> We're going to try a fun camera angle and see how that works out. Calculating route. Calculating dicks. Oh, Matt's editing this one. Uh, Matt, sorry about the fucking dicks part. I mean, sorry ish. You know how it is. He's gonna text me. I know I'm gonna get a message. Fucking dicks? Question mark, exclamation point. Yeah, this is just a technical term that you're probably not ready for. Matt, how does it feel to be the star of the videos when you're not even here? Must be a great feeling. Okay, so I'm gonna attempt to put this camera on the back of Trav's backpack using a magnet. Yeah, thinnest part. And I can control it from my bike with the other part of this camera, which is pretty damn sweet if you ask me and i'll be able to see if it falls off when he rides like a jackass but he wouldn't do that would you trev yeah the preview is going to be interesting it doesn't update very well when it's that far away okay yeah are you ready to do this i haven't tried this kick yet it's probably i'm probably gonna fall so i'll make sure oh you're not recording <laughs> nope okay higher than that bro we have a shot. i need to learn to get on from the high side <sighs> i figured out how to get off on the high side it's just hard because my ankle's fucked up and I have to put all my weight on it. On an uneven peg pointing in the wrong direction. I can't figure out what angle it wants to be at. The camera. It's disconnecting. Uh, yeah. I don't think it likes the distance. Just I can also just manually record from the camera. I don't have to use the remote. Okay, it is recording. I think that baffle's coming out. It's much louder all of a sudden. Good one. Oh fuck, oh fuck. You all right? Those logs were uh, not awesome. That camera on your back was recording. That was awesome. Yeah, the problem is I can't get off my bike to help you. And, well, actually, if I pull up into that little rut, I can. Okay, well, this is one unexpected problem with this bike is I really struggle to get my feet down on uneven ground. Dude, that's gonna be awesome on your backpack camera. Yeah. The camera didn't fall off. <laughs> no, it's still on. Ready? <laughs> Why do you have such a heavy bike, dude? Yeah, that was effed. That was super effed. Everyone agrees that was effed. Yeah, everyone in the comments is like, that was effed. Well, you recovered like a boss, good roll. You are good at crashing. All right, well, that was good footage. Thank you for that. There he goes. Yeah, I mean, it records on its own, so. Okay, I remember. 
remember this. Oh, snow. It's no big deal. Oh, left, left. Honestly, if you get your front wheel down, although we don't know how thick that is, I mean, it doesn't look too bad based on the tire tracks. Or we could back up, I could back you up and you could take the left line. You gonna push? Yeah, I'm just gonna give you a little nudge. Let me know when you're ready. There you go. Little nudge, little nudge. Honestly, you need to just go for it, but it might be better to go with this, like hit the V. You wanna get off and walk it? We can just get on each side. You're on the skid plate right now, so. Now you're gonna lose footing, so. If you're not confident you're gonna get up on the seat, then I would walk it. Oh, Jesus, that was deep. Oh, don't stop, don't stop. Oh, okay. You were on the edge. Camera's not gonna do it justice, but that's at least a foot deep bullshit, so. Oh, my baffle's gone. I mean, we probably should. You said it was in there just right back a little ways, right? I'll go back, how about that? It can't be that far, it's only been like two minutes. You're sure it was there? Hopefully it's just right, like, not that far back. And that's why when something's loose, you should fix it then. There it is. Nope, that's a pudding cup. Stupid pudding cup. Why do you gotta look like an exhaust baffle? That's not it, that's a stick. Well, so far we've discovered that exhaust baffles are not pudding cups, and they are not sticks. And I could have taken two minutes and taken the damn wrench out of my toolkit and tighten that down and this wouldn't happen so again don't be lazy kids okay, well, I think he said he saw it farther up than this so I'm about to turn around for all I know he didn't actually see it it could have been gone a long time ago yeah okay well no good hopefully I find it on the way back what is that That is a rock, you dumbass. Okay, baffles are not rocks, sticks, or pudding cups. Mystery solved. Okay. Well, maybe we'll find it on the way up. The lighting's better. I feel like it was gone before we got on the road when it got that loud. That's my guess. There's another damn pudding cup. What are the odds? Some I'll drive along this road throwing out pudding cups to confuse people that are looking for exhaust baffles. Nothing. I mean, we were going 30 miles an hour. It could have flown off the trail or it could have been gone. I don't know. Whatever. Yeah, well, that sucks. I don't even care that I have to replace it. I just don't want to do the rest of this trip without it. That's what's annoying is listening to this from exhaust. Oh my God. Are we snowmobiling right now or? No, I don't like the look of the left. It's probably two feet deep. Okay, B camera off for real. This is where we saw that Ducati Scrambler and I was amazed. And then I've ridden one and I was like, oh, this is easy for that bike. Are we done? Is there a workaround? What's over here? Uh, yes? I think so. It looks like it. Well, there's a huge ass drift over here too. Well, shit, we might have to go back around to Oak Ridge. Anyway, I did not anticipate there being this much snow. And I don't think it's gonna get better. Okay, I just wanna show you why we're turning around. Cause people always wanna make comments. I could get through that. Well then come do it. Like that's, uh, that's you, ride your ride. That's your ride, do it. Uh, but here's the road. So we have snow melt and this is at least a foot deep, super soft bottom that I'm honestly, it's sand. Like 
that's lake bed, which means we're gonna get stuck in it. Unless we just, let's just give it full throttle all the way through. Sure, until we fall over or something. And then, so there is slightly a workaround, but as you can see, the snow is not getting any better and we're only going up in elevation. So in my experience, and I've, I've fallen into this trap more than once. In my experience, when you start hitting snow drifts that are hard to get over and around and you tell yourself, oh, it'll get better around the next corner or this is the worst of it. It never is, especially when you're going up. So we are uh, gonna backtrack and take the bypass, I think. There's a bypass around on a nicer road. It's too bad because we really like this road, but uh, it is just not in any condition to be ridden right now. And we remember, so we haven't even hit the parts that were hard last time. There's way deeper mud holes and stuff up here. So the uh, discretion is the better part of valor. We're turning around. I'm gonna have to go back to the gas station, I think. Yeah, that's the plan. We're gonna ride out. Don't know how much I'll film because you've already seen it. All right, let's go. No, no, dude, we found it. My baffle. <laughs> it's right here. Oh, the bolt is gone. But that's, I don't care. It should be right here somewhere, honestly. Oh, it's right there. Yeah. Yeah, best case scenario. I told you we got turned around because it was fate. There she is. Well, no, I could put it back in right now. Oh. I just popped my suspenders off. Well, I gotta fix my suspenders anyway. All right, well, we found it, so this saga has a happy ending. So we're back at the Odell Sportsman Center because that 40 miles of out and back, I don't have the range for, so. So I gotta refill and restart, so we're essentially getting started again three hours later than we planned. But such is the nature of adventure riding. Sometimes you gotta improvise, and that's why you build in a lot of safety margins, time-wise and fuel-wise, which is what I'm doing right now. All right, well, I think we're gonna grab a bite and then start over. We're gonna try this bypass, and if that doesn't work, we gotta backtrack all the way here and hit the highway, so. Okay, here we are at the bypass, or at least the alternate route. We're hoping for the best. Also, a very kind stranger at the gas station had the wrench size we needed to fix the baffle. And he actually managed to get it, the, the bolt to thread in, which was very difficult. So we're back to not as loud mode. Ooh, pavement. Fancy. Fancy. And back to less fancy. Normal. Pedestrian, even. Ooh, there's some dirt. Friends, nothing in it. I just waved at an empty car. Yeah, we're on the we're on the PCT. It's a trail cache. What here am I in third? Well, this road's a lot better. Okay, that's encouraging. It's a main road too. This goes to the highway. Okay, well, the road is flooded, uh, as the other side, but this is at least a gravel base, so I'm gonna attempt it. This could be fun. Who knows? Oh, it's not bad. It doesn't get very deep. Okay, huh. I had a moment. I was like, oh, not again! No, we got this. We got this. That's a thousand times better than the other one that was just muddy, muddy silt. Oh, and then we're... You all right? What happened back there? Bruh? Bruh? All, all I heard was like, oh fuck, and you cut out. This, this took a beating in the last fire. Wow. That's crazy. I wonder if it's the rough patch fire. Well, I've been on the road for half an hour. And my baffle just came out again, but I heard it, so I think it's right back here. Well, the good news is, here it is. Uh, the bolt is long gone, and uh, it's too hot to put in a bag or even touch right now, so we gotta just hang out for a bit and let it cool. Well, this is what I didn't want to see, but I'm gonna keep going. Maybe it's just this. Sure, that's how it always is, right? It's always just this.
Also, my exhaust is significantly louder now. I don't know if you can tell. Okay. Should be taking pictures of this, honestly. <laughs> don't do that. Let her spin, let her spin. There you go, there you go. Cool rooster tail, dude. That's cool. All right, hopefully, I'm not even gonna say it. Really, damn it. We are so far up this road. Yep. I mean, we can, well, we can turn around and go back out to the highway. Um, Cause that, that one road goes out to a highway that's gotta go somewhere. We don't have to go all the way back to to Crescent, I hope. So it, it does take us north towards the route. We end up in Roseburg. We could get on at Sutherland and do the rest. Clearly, it's too early. That sucks. Well, stop by snow again. These drifts are... We're just not going to push the bikes through them over and over again just to find more around the corner. <sighs> well, there it is, friends. The end of the road once again. Oh, my God, there's a million bugs right here. All right, back through the snow and uh, finding an alternate path. Always a pleasant time. Adventure. No, I was saying when you couldn't hear me that it's cursed. All right, well, yeah. Well, getting skunked twice is disappointing, but the point of this trip is not the route. It's the setup and the gear and getting a chance to test it. And we're doing all of that, including the, uh, including the, the Zumo here. So I'm not like, mad that we can't do the route, especially because we've done it before. It's just more like frustrating that we keep wasting all this time, but the point of this trip is to test the gear and we'll do that no matter where we end up camping tonight, so it's it's fine in terms of the purpose of the trip, but I was just I'm just shocked to find this miss <laughs> I'm so uh, <laughs> I'm surprised to find this much snow mid-June I really am. Headed down to the intersection, I see it on the map take a ride, get on the highway make our way to an I think we can get back on the route we're gonna try and if not we just go to Sutherland and take the route from there just do the second half whatever I guess we're seven miles from 138 we'll regroup there and and uh, carry on This is the way we're going. I think the only thing that could screw us up now is if they're doing fire reconstruction up here and it's closed off or something. We would have come in from here. I remember this section from last time we did it. Yep, right there. Now we're up in the woods. Up and over to Sutherland. Unplanned. Um, several hard. times backtracking yeah. due to snow and very flooded roads. We got to ride through a flooded yeah, road. Yeah, we redeemed ourselves for the one yeah. by riding through the other one. Right. That was actually kind of fun. It was. I, I 
do wish we'd gone back and done it a few times and filmed it. So that would have looked pretty. That actually would have made some really cool uh, Instagram pictures. And that Matt's like, why didn't we go back? Right. It's because I'm bad at YouTube, you know. Sorry, Matt. Sorry, Matt. Suck it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it was fun though. It was fantastic weather all day. There it is. Check that out. Oh, oh my God! Thank you. That's hey, awesome. You're welcome. I've never been happier to see pancakes in my life. of their food. This is why we stopped for dinner along the way instead of eating a mountain house meal at camp in an hour. Patty melt. Patty melt with too many with onions. With sautéed onions. That's what we call an invitation to set up camp downwind. How is it? Wow. I'm Delicious. really glad I captured that. Delicious. I need that in slow motion, Matt. <laughs> Those are good pancakes, but we gotta get back in the woods, find a campsite. Let's go camping time! around that end of the line there's always the other site it's just across the road okay well that was a fun side mission that failed Bumpy, I guess I should say, but it's not exactly level. Well, the hits just keep on coming. So the, losing the baffle out of my exhaust changed the angle of the exhaust, which sent it directly into one of the buckles on the Rogue bag, which melted it. So shakedown run was probably a good idea because we'd have had all these issues on the Oregon BDR trip. And instead, I know that I need to replace my chain, now my Rogue bag, figure out how to get my exhaust to stop doing that. So it's stupid that I'm having this many problems, but like we keep saying, better on this trip than the big trip. Tra Trav is super ambitious. He's already setting up his tent. Slowly. But I have a lukewarm beer I need to drink because he, he bought it at like two o'clock in the afternoon and it's been in his bag this whole time. So it's not gonna get any warmer. It's not like we found a river to put it in, so cheers. And there's nothing to do up here because there's no cell phone service and we can't have a fire. So uh, all we're going to do is drink and stare at each other and probably go to bed early. Woo! Yeah. So uh, just in case things get dumb later, I just want to thank Motocamp Nerd for sponsoring this video and this trip and remind you to go check out his website. And I will link all of my gear that I use from his website in the description of this video. And don't forget about the promo code Dork in the Road, which saves you 10% off your first order. Pretty exciting. Tomorrow's ride will be much shorter. We are 60 miles, I think, from the end, which this was always where we wanted to stop tonight, but we thought we would get a lot more backcountry, and instead we just got a lot of backtracking, which is not the same thing. But uh, I forgot to get the bug spray out, and I need to do that now. So catch up with you when I get the tent set up. Tent is set up. Travis set up. Bikes are there. I'm gonna be honest with you. It's been a long day. I'm tired. So I'm gonna enjoy Mr. Puff Puff and sip on a little bourbon. Like I said, no cell phones, no fire. We're just gonna stare at each other and drink. So I'll spare you that. Uh, it's been great. It's been a great day. It's a, a true adventure. Persevering through adversity and rerouting and finding ways to still reach your destination. It's been a good shakedown run because so many things that I wouldn't have wanted to fail on the BDR have failed. I'm trying to look at it. Uh, silver linings here. It's been great, Trav. Thanks for thanks for coming along. And I just want to say thank you to all of you for watching. This is part one, so make sure that you're subscribed if you want to see the continuation and us finishing the route. I suspect tomorrow will be a lot less eventful, meaning we'll be able to just go finish the route. 
uh, a lot less rerouting and exhaust failing and things melting. Who knows? You never know in a dork video. Hopefully tomorrow is just us triumphantly finishing the route and then riding up the coast, and I don't want you to miss that, so. And also camp morning shenanigans, which is always a good time, but. Thanks to Motocamp Nerd for sponsoring this video. Thank to all of you for watching, and uh, please do not forget to be excellent to each other. Oh, thank you. A mosquito. Excellent! Wasn't expecting that to happen. But we're going to need roads. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry, I didn't take my allergy pill. Oh, that's not the way I want to go. I thought that was the road. Oh, dear. Hi, dear. Kind of gorgeous. Your babies are so far back. I don't like this. I don't like it at all. <laughs>